So here's our circuit diagram for that difference detector. And here's our D flip-flop in situ with this little triangle in the top of the component diagram, which indicates that the D flip-flop is controlled by a clock. What's a clock? We'll see that in a moment. On my main board, what I've done is I've twisted the dimensions slightly so that we can still see the circuit diagram in space. But now I've added the extra dimension of time, stretching rightwards into the future. So this is the circuit at time zero, at time one, at time two, at time three. So time is marching from left to right as inputs flow in at the top and outputs flow out at the bottom. And here's our D flip-flop. It's wired up to the input, but the clock, uh, the clock input is also wired up to a signal. And this is what drives the whole business. A clock symbol, a clock signal, simply put, is a signal which alternates between zero and one, back to zero, up to one. So you can think of it as almost literally going tick, going up to one, and then tock down to zero, tick up to one, tock down to zero. And it's one complete cycle of a tick followed by a tock that makes the kind of step that we saw in the tiny machine. And literally, the tick means listen to your input, and the tock means change your output. So we'll see well, how the D flip-flop uh, deals with those instructions by uh, tracing what happens here. So let's suppose that we start with this, this blue wire having a zero signal coming in. And let's suppose that we choose to send a zero signal coming in on uh, the uh, X input, then we could compute just using the ordinary logic for exclusive OR that a zero will come out on the output. But we also know that when the tick happens, the D flip-flop will recognize that its input is a copy of that zero. So when the tock happens, that zero will be sent to the output. So now after the tick and the tock, we arrive at time one and we can look at what happens. What happens if we now decide to send in a, a one signal? Here's the zero coming in from the flip-flop, remembering what X was last time, and the one coming in now, by the ordinary logic of exclusive OR, they are different, so out comes a one at time one. But also, when the tick happens, the flip-flop pays attention to its input, which is one, and when the tock happens, it modifies its output, so that that's now the one. And let's suppose we still send in another one, at time two, then when uh, we're computing the output at time two, we see the one coming in from the flip-flop and the one coming in from the input and the ordinary logic of exclusive OR tells us that no, those are not different, so a zero will come out. But when the tick happens, the flip-flop will recognize that a one came in, listening to its input, and when the tock happens, the flip-flop will change its output, or rather retain its the same output as last time, being one. So finally, when we get to uh, stage three, let's send in another zero. The, the wire coming from the flip-flop tells us that it was a one last time. The zero coming from the input tells us it's a zero now. So exclusive OR tells us that yes, those are different. And if we were to carry on into the future, then we'd have the tick happening and the flip-flop listening to the zero, and then the tock happening, sending the zero on the output, uh, ready for whatever happens 
at time four. So I haven't told you how to build a D flip-flop, but don't worry, I will get there. It just told you what the idea is, that it remembers a bit from the past, controlled by its clock, it looks at its input on the tick, and then it changes its output on the tock. So as long as we have a clock signal sending in tick-tock, tick-tock, that will create an idea of time step. 